In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we just heard this familiar story of the Gerasene demoniacs. Right? Christ goes out of his way, purposely, to go to this place that is full of sinners. Right? Because these people were keeping pigs. They were swine herds, right? Good Jews wouldn't be keeping pigs. Right? So Christ came out of his way to go to these people. He meets these demoniacs. And I, I love the efficiency of Christ here because he drives the demons out of the men. And then with, you know, it's like a two birds with one stone thing. The demons come out of the men, they go into the pigs, and then no more pigs. Right? He, he solved that problem for them and gave them this kind of opportunity to start again. Right? You, were, you were kind of uh, going astray there, doing this thing you shouldn't do, and now I've solved that for you, so you, can, you have this opportunity to begin again. Right? But they don't begin again. Rather, they send him away. Um, and we know in orthodoxy that Scripture is never just some sort of dead letter or even some, some myth or some story uh, from the past that we can hear and kind of think about. But Scripture is it's much more than that. It's alive. It's always about us. So, for example, in the Gospel, when we hear that Peter abandoned Christ and betrayed him three times, we look at that and we say, I'm Peter. I have abandoned Christ. I have betrayed him. I haven't been faithful to him. And when we see Peter repent and come back to Christ, we say, how can I model this repentance of Peter? Right? Scripture is always pointing toward us. It's always about us. And so it's always living. Right? And so this story is no exception to that. <clears throat> Christ goes out of his way and he comes to us. Even though we might be wayward in a way or two. We have sins. We have things that are weighing us down. He comes to us and he heals us. He drives the demons out. And through that, he gives us this opportunity to begin again. And so for us, it's our job to decide how the story ends. What will we do? How do we respond to this healing that Christ gave us? And the big kind of full, true answer is a hard answer. And that's that we live according to the gospel commandments. We pray. We fast. We struggle with everything we have to follow Christ. And this is true, and it's all of our calling. But there are times when that can be discouraging. It can seem like a crushing burden that we just don't have it in us to meet this. So in those times when we don't have what it takes to, to meet that challenge, when we don't have the energy to, to fight just a little bit more, there's a simpler way. Rather than sending Christ away, we can say thank you. We can practice gratitude. And it sounds small, but I think all of us know that a thank you can make all the difference in the world. We can put up with just about anything as long as there's gratitude involved. I remember one day, uh, Mashka Anna was out or something, but I, I was, the story was that I was alone with the kids all day and I was having to deal with them and take care of all their things. Um, and I was just having a horrible day. I, like, I hadn't slept the night before. I was in a bad mood. I might have been sick. You know, uh, everything was going wrong. Just one of those horrible days. And somehow I, you know, managed to get lunch on the table, right? Even though I was stewing and in this bad mood and it probably wasn't very good or anything, but I got it on the table. And uh, we were about to eat and Theodore, my three-year-old, looks up to me and says, thank you for making this lunch, Papa. And then John also looks up and says, yes, thank you for making this lunch, Papa. And I just melted. Like the tears came. I was like, I love you boys so much. I'm sorry I've been a jerk to you today. Right, but that gratitude meant everything. And it's important to remember that we can offer this gratitude in the good times and the bad times. 
So during the good times, right, we're feeling these blessings of God, we feel God's presence in our life, and we can just remember to always say, thank you, God, for this wonderful blessing you've given me. It's only because of you that I'm having such a wonderful day, that everything is going so well. Glory to God. But when things are bad, it might be a little harder to remember, but we don't need to feel the need to bear this burden and to be some kind of great saint who can just handle it. Because sometimes we can't. But we also know that every difficulty that comes into our life, it's not like God was just turning away from us at that moment. Everything that God gives us is always for our salvation. It's always just his way of trying to reach us, even if we have a hard time seeing that in the moment. And so knowing that, we can again say, glory to you, O God. Thank you for your providence, for giving me this opportunity to struggle through this for you. St. Paisios uh, tells this story of how he went to church one day, and it was actually the same gospel reading of the Gerasene demoniac. And he said there was this unassuming guy, otherwise unassuming guy, who during the gospel reading kept saying, glory to you, O God, like audibly, like right behind him. Not the reader, just some guy in church, glory to you, O God. So Christ comes into the land, glory to you, O God. And uh, he meets the demon-possessed men, glory to you, O God. He drives the demon out, glory to you, O God. Uh, the demons go into the pigs, and they uh, rush off to the abyss, and, and, and all perish in the, in the waters there, glory to you, O God. And uh, St. Paisio says he was a little confused about this at first, but he later realized that it was completely appropriate that this man was saying this, because he says, it's that glory to you that throws the demons into the sea. And he says, doxology, uh, in other words, saying thank you or glorifying God, doxology sanctifies everything. It fills one with gratitude. He goes mad in the good sense and celebrates everything. And when one thanks God even for the least things, the blessing of God then comes in such great abundance that he simply cannot endure it, and then the devil who can no longer stand nearby departs. So this story of the Gerasen demoniac, like we said, this is our story. And we get to decide how it ends. We can't always stomach the heavy burden of life, of the full task that lies ahead of us. But God does not want us to feel overly burdened. He doesn't want us to despair, to give up, to feel like we just can't do it, we're not good enough. God does not want this oppression from us. So when we have nothing to offer, we can try to remember that we can offer our gratitude. As little as that is, we can offer that thank you to God and struggle to do this deep in our hearts every day when things are good and when things are so bad that we can't see how God could allow it. Always saying thank you. Because when we offer this gratitude, this thanksgiving, then we're not sending Christ away like what we heard in the gospel earlier today, but we're inviting him to come up and take residence in our hearts and be with us forever. And there's nothing more important than that. Amen.